What's up guys, it's Matilda, obviously. In this video, I'm going to talk about something that I consider pretty private, or not private, because I post pictures on Instagram and I do videos on YouTube and such, but this isn't something that I've talked about that much. I've just kind of stated the fact that then moved on. But what I'm talking about is that I suffer from a chronic disease called psoriasis. This is a disease that a lot of people struggle with. However, I wouldn't consider myself the best role model when it comes to talking about my skin. I try to hide it as best to my abilities and I try to hide it on pictures and in my videos in my everyday life and it shouldn't be that way it really shouldn't and I'm becoming more and more comfortable with my skin and with my body and I have pretty severe psoriasis like it covers my entire body my legs my arms and I can be really ashamed of it sometimes and as I said it shouldn't really be that way so I'm making this video to talk about the fact that I have it and I'm also going to talk about products that I use how I battle it and you can make it better and I have so I'm going to talk about that how it has made me feel and I'm just going to open up to you guys so if that's something that interests you you can you know you can keep on watching <laughs> But before we get into my story and how to battle the psoriasis and everything like that, I just have to share with you a brand that I found. So this is a paid collaboration with Itchy. Their products are great, they're vegan and cruelty free. They're really great when it comes to psoriasis or other eczema. However, you can also use them if you have dry skin and they're just amazing. They're called the body creams. Body cream unscented and body cream scented. And let me tell you, these bad boys work. I'm I'm going to talk about that later in the video where I talk about how to battle your psoriasis. However, as I stated previously, you don't really have to suffer from any chronic skin diseases to use these. They work really great. I suffer from dry skin as well. And my body isn't completely covered with psoriasis. I still have patches where I don't have psoriasis. And I use these there as well. Like they work just as fine as if you have a chronic skin disease. So you can check these out on the website. However, I'm going to talk about them down the line <laughs> during this video. But first, off. I'm going to talk about my story and how it has affected me uh, psychologically but also physically and how it has made me feel and when it started. So it started around like when I was 13 or something like that. Uh, my sister, she suffers from psoriasis as well, as well as my mother. It's genetic so we got it from our mom. Thanks mom. No, I'm kidding. My mom, she has pretty severe psoriasis as well. So I wasn't really shocked or surprised surprised when I started like my scalp started being itchy and first I kind of thought that I had lice but then I noticed my skin being red then it started traveling down my hairline and I also started noticing patches around my like around here what's this called elbow <laughs> my elbows like I started noticing patches of psoriasis on my elbows and knees. Then it started spreading. It started spreading across my body and the older I got, the more I got. However, the more I got, the less my sister got. And now she only has small patches of psoriasis on her body, but mostly in her scalp. I've heard that, that is pretty common in people suffering from psoriasis. They only have it on their scalp. That's not me. I have it everywhere. Lucky me. Yay. Also, I'm going to show you pictures throughout this entire video. Video while I'm talking about this so if you're not so keen on seeing those pictures you know don't look at them if you're scared of eczema anyways but before I get further into this video I'm just going to read off on Wikipedia about what it says on psoriasis so psoriasis is a long-lasting non-contagious autoimmune skin disease categorized by raised areas of abnormal skin these areas are red or purple on some people with darker skin dry itchy and scaly Psoriasis varies in severity from small localized patches to complete body coverage. Injury to the skin can trigger psoriatic skin changes at the spot, which is known as Kobner phenomenon. Kobner, Kobner phenomenon. I don't know how to pronounce that last name. I'm sorry. So that's a picture of a woman suffering from pretty severe psoriasis. But yeah, let's uh, get back to me, you know. This is about me. When I was around 18 or something like that, my psoriasis was pretty much seasonal. So during the winter, I got a lot, but during the summertime, 
it pretty much went away. Doctors and people with psoriasis will tell you that sun tanning and so on works, like the sunlight helps with the psoriasis. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help the psoriasis, it helps removing the psoriasis. The older I got, the more kind of stayed during summertime. It is better during summertime, but it doesn't completely go away. That is what I'm trying to say. So uh, when I was like 14 or 15, I wasn't really bothered by the fact that I suffered from psoriasis, but when I was like 16 or 17, that is when I just hated. I hated the fact that I had psoriasis. As a teenager, you kinda, you know, you see the world in another lens. You kinda think that everyone's looking at you, you're so worried what people might think of you. In those times or in that age, I was just so scared and ashamed what people might think of me and they thought that I was disgusting. And people aren't really that nice sometimes. If you have eczema, I am pretty much confident that you have been a victim of people being like, Is that contagious? That's disgusting. And what's that? I don't think that people say these things out of malice. I'm pretty certain that they're just uneducated, but it's such um, a bummer. Especially children are very... They look. I mean, I'm not really bothered by the kids. I wasn't the best kid myself when I was when I was a kid. I'm not really bothered by that, but it's just like so tiring when people are always asking about your skin. And in that age, that is especially triggering. I started becoming very self-conscious and ashamed of my skin and how it looked like and I tried to hide it to the best of my abilities and it's so tiring and draining you know, to feel like you're not pretty or beautiful and that feeling has kinda never went away when it comes to my skin. I edit my photos to make my skin look more beautiful. I don't want to hear people saying that it's disgusting or having a lot of people commenting on it. I get it enough in the real life. I just want to walk around in a crop top and a skirt without people asking about what's that on your legs or is it contagious? Like no. It's pretty rare that any type of eczema is contagious so please don't ask that to a person. If it would be contagious I don't think that these people with these diseases would go around spreading it so you know please don't ask those kind of questions just be mindful and respectful and uh, don't ask about it it's not really nice to be like you have a pimple in your face did you know that like yeah i have a mirror myself but yeah this is some has been something that i've been ashamed of for my entire life and the older i get the worse it gets so it never really goes away and right now i have a lot of my arms in my forehead in parts that you don't really want to have it so you're pretty much ashamed when showing your skin to someone, especially, you know, a partner. And I've never ever heard my fiance complain or anything like that, but it just, you see all of these billboards with like silky smooth skin and you don't look like that. And that can really be a drag. <laughs> If I'm going to be completely honest, but it isn't like I watched it get worse and worse without doing anything. I've tried to battle it during specific times in my life, but it just sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to talk about the things that you can do, the things that has worked for me. The first thing, I know that this isn't gonna be the best thing to hear, but it is what you put in your body. Try to cut out sugars and processed foods and so on. I have a try to cut down on sugar now. Uh, it took a very long time before I made this decision myself to cut down on sugars and processed foods and whatever because it isn't really fun because those things are great <laughs> like pasta, hamburgers and pizza. But try to cut down on those things and try to eat healthier and drink a lot of water. Water is so great. Eat less sugar and processed foods. Drink more water because there are scientific proof that what goes into your stomach really affects the skin as an organ. It's our biggest organ. It is really much connected with our stomach and our bowels. So that is the first thing, healthier food and water. And then the second thing is pretty self-explanatory, but that is like like body creams to help with you know dry skin and that is why I really recommend itchy it reduces 
redness, irritation, and itch. Moisturizing anti-itch technology, scientifically proven, hypoallergenic, and vegan. And the ingredients list is like amazing, hands down, great, <laughs> really great. And also, you can actually subscribe. This can be like a subscription-based thing. On their website, you can check them out below, you know, in the top comments or in my bio. Remember, it's not only for the people with psoriasis. If you have dry skin or irritated skin or sensitive skin, these are great as well but the ingredients list is very well put together and they're made in sweden so i do really recommend these and also supplements because as i talked about before healthier food and water is great so recommend a daily dose two capsules with foods packed with white vitamin a and vitamin b biotin olive extract things that you'll need for healthier skin you do have to remember that the eczema is only a symptom of the real disease psoriasis is an autoimmune skin disease which basically means that the immune system attacks your skin cells which creates these abnormal skin patches that is why it's such a great thing to change your diet and drink more water because the disease is from within these are just symptoms so number three is something that i've tried myself and something that also worked and that is light treatments it's not really like a tanning bed it's more so a room where you walk into and you do 30 seconds at a time and kind of work yourself upwards so what is the difference between a sun tanning bed and light treatments so light treatments are specifically made for people with skin diseases so the difference is basically ultraviolet lighting the sun radiates two types of ultraviolet lighting the sun tanning bed uses the one where you get tanner and the light treatment uses the one where it really digs deep into your skin and it helps with psoriasis and that is why you can only do it for like 30 seconds at a time because it's really strong so that is the difference between light treatments and the sun tanning bed so you can't really go to a normal sun tanning bed and expect it to work on your psoriasis because it lacks the right ultraviolet lighting so yeah that is why i went to light treatments however i had to do it like three times a week and it was just like too much even though it worked and i could see results i didn't really have the time or energy to do it three times a week every week so i stopped and after that it got worse again as it does but now, for the first time ever, I could really see results again. I've changed my diet. I've started using Itchy. You're going to see on the pictures on the screen here, but all you see these white patches of skin. These are patches where I previously had psoriasis, but now it's just like, it's getting better and better. I still have a lot of psoriasis left and I'm never going to be completely free of this disease, but it's really getting better. And also something that I've done, I bought a humidifier. I think a lot of you have seen it on my live streams. I have a humidifier in my living room. It creates like the best humidity in our apartment for my psoriasis. So I've looked up on Google what the best, oh, what the best humidity is for psoriasis and it works it really does for the first time in a long time i can really see results it's getting better and i have big patches of white skin where previously had psoriasis and i'm so thankful for itchy and these products and the way i changed my diet and my humidifier and all of these things combined will really help with your battle with psoriasis or any other skin diseases these things will work trust me it worked for me so i'm sure that it will work for you as well however you can talk to your dermatologist on how to tailor your plan to you know be better suited for you maybe you want to give it a try with the light treatments or there are certain medicines out there that will help with your psoriasis so you know you do you you do you i wanted to try these products and they worked so thank you so much Itchy, for sponsoring this video and thank you so much for watching this video i really hope that the things i've said have helped you and also that you can try these tips yourself but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye guys